Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Almighty Zen Taco, bringing you another tutorial video. This one, we're gonna be learning how to make a inventory system. So full disclosure, this is going to be a little bit complicated, so I'm gonna do my best to go slowly and as thoroughly as possible. Um, and also, this doesn't have complete functionality. There's a few things I'd like to add, which I will be adding in a second tutorial. But this is complicated enough for one, so we're going to go ahead and get underway. I'm gonna show you what this looks like when it's done. So we can use the arrow keys to move around what's selected and what's not. We can press enter to grab a slot and then move the items around. And as you can see, the items actually have a description. Um, now, one thing we can't do yet, we can't drop an item on top of another item. Um, that was actually giving me some difficulty. I'm gonna need more time to figure out how to do that and recode this so it works in that way. But we can add as many items as we want. We actually have four possible items, or five rather. Um, and if we add them all the way through, we cannot add more than we have space for. We can uh, highlight something though and press D to delete it, essentially using it or removing it from the inventory. So that's what it's gonna look like when it is done. So let's find out how to do this. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is insert an active object. Now this is going to be our slot object. So name it slot. And this is gonna be just the uh, grid that holds these different items. So this is gonna need some animations. So just make it a black box for now. Um, and once you understand what we're doing, you can obviously change your art any way you want, but I'm gonna keep this simple for our purposes. All right, stopped is gonna be the default way that this thing is gonna look. So I'm just gonna have a black box with a s incomplete outline. So I'm gonna put little gray um, corners on it. Okay. Now for walking, this is gonna be when it is the currently selected, or rather not selected, but the current, um, the current slot that we have moved to with the arrow. Uh, the, the third frame running is gonna be when it's selected. That means we've pressed enter on it. So this one, we're just gonna make this a white box on the outline. So I'm gonna use the box tool to do that. And for the last one, I'm gonna give it a big fat red outline. So I'm gonna change my size to two there and boom. Okay, now I'm just going to control drag these out. I want this to be the exact same object and I'm just gonna give, uh, create some slots here, give myself some slots to work with. Okay, this slot item is going to need an alterable value. It's gonna need an ID value, so go ahead and give it one now. And we also now need another object. This is going to be a variable control object. So I'm just gonna call it var box. And it's just gonna control variables that we need for this engine to work. So the first variable we're gonna put in here is going to be current ID. And this is going to be the current ID value of uh, where we're trying to be on the grid. Okay, so we're gonna give all these IDs, we're gonna spread some IDs, and then we're, gonna, we're going to be able to like, move around with the, uh, with the arrow keys. So let's go ahead and throw some code in here. Spread IDs. <clears throat> This is going to be a start of frame event. And all we're gonna do is go on over to the slot item, alterable value, spread value, and we're gonna make this one. We're gonna spread the value of one in ID. We're doing that so that we can use the uh, ID of zero. We're gonna keep that reserved. Okay, so now we want to be able to uh, move around and select different boxes. And we're gonna use the arrow keys for that. So go ahead and insert a new uh, event. It's gonna be keyboard upon pressing a key. This will be right. And what we're gonna do when we press right is we want to add to the alterable value of ID and we're gonna add one. Let's copy this. Control C, Control V, we're gonna paste it. We're gonna edit this and make it left. And for left, we wanna subtract one. So we can just edit this and uh, add a negative one to it. That'll make us go left. Now, we need to look at our grid here for up and down, it's gonna be based on how big each row is. So our row is a three, six. Our row is six. So going up, we'll be subtracting six. Going down, we'll be adding six. So let's do that now. We will say, we'll copy and paste this. We'll go down. Um, and this is going to be adding six. Let's copy and paste. It's gonna be up, and up is going to be subtracting six. 
Okay, so now we need to scope the object that is shares the same ID with the, the uh, current ID value, which is what we've been changing through the arrow keys. So we will say, is this slot object the alterable value? Find out if ID equals the value from our var box. We're gonna grab the value of current ID. So when that happens, we want to have the animation change. So you go to animation, change, and we're gonna make it walking. Let's test it out. So it does work, um, but we also need to make sure that when it's not the current ID, that it is off. So we will copy this, paste it, edit, and uh, where it says equal, we want to make it different. So we're finding out if the if the uh, the slot is different than the current slot. And when that's the case, we're going to change the animation sequence to stopped. All right, let's, let's give a look at it. Okay, so it does work, but there is a problem. The arrows are completely wrong with the way they work. Um, and that's, that's actually, they do work just fine. It's actually a problem of which boxes are where. The top left boxes should actually be, it's gonna end up being the last box made. Whereas we want it to be the box with the number one ID. So the reason this is, is because um, the IDs are spread based on which box was created last. So the order they were made. So we're gonna delete them all except for one. So the way we're gonna get around this is, is this. We're gonna start from the bottom right and then we're gonna uh, copy these boxes in reverse. So just hold in control and let's remake our grid and we'll do it in such a way. Wait, I messed that up. Needs to be six. <clears throat> We're gonna do it in such a way that um, we work in reverse. Okay, let's look at it. All right, works perfectly. So that's exactly what we want. Now we're gonna do something where we essentially, obviously we don't want uh, to be able to have no boxes ever selected. So we don't wanna be able to move past the complete number of boxes or lower than one. So we are going to clamp our values. We're gonna do that this way. Go to the box, the variable box object. Uh, under alter value compare, we're going to find out if current ID is lower than one. And if that's true, we're going to set it to one. And then we're going to find out if current ID is greater than the number of boxes we have. So click on the box object, go to count and select number of objects. And if that happens, then we want to set the current ID value to the number of objects of the box. So go to count number of objects. Now, if this worked, we should stay on this grid now. Yep, can't get off the grid. So it works great. Okay, so go back to our var box and we are gonna add another variable. And this is going to be selected ID. And this is gonna be the value that holds the box we have pressed enter on, the one that we have selected. Um, we now need to also add an entirely new active object, and this is going to be the items themselves. So let's call this item one. These need to have a qualifier, so add one. Um, these qualifiers are complete, completely arbitrary, so it's up to you whatever you want to pick. I'm going to pick the one that makes the most sense to me, which is going to be inventory item. Now I'm going to give this a uh, variable. I'm going to call this slot ID. This is going to be the ID value that we are going to give to these items. And we're essentially going to, uh, whenever they, we're just going to put them on this, we're going to match up the slot ID with the, uh, the slot who has an ID. So if the slot ID of this was five, it's going to be on the fifth slot. We also need an alterable string. We're going to call this description. And this is going to be where we place our description of the item. So I'm going to say a stupid diamond that is in every game I make by default. 
Okay. So that's our first item. We need to go back into our code here, and at the beginning where we are spreading the IDs, we need to spread the ID number one for group inventory item. So that is the uh, the items that we have made. Go to alterable value, spread value, under slot ID, we want to spread one. Okay, we're gonna copy this just to see how this works. So these are all gonna have different IDs. So now we want to sort them. So let's do that now. <clears throat> we're gonna start an always event, and then we are always going to under the count here for this group of events representing our objects, we are always going to uh, go to for each object. We're gonna start a for each loop. We're gonna call it sort. Okay, so now we actually have to um, do our loop. So insert this here, go to our group inventory item, loops on each. The name of that loop was sort, so write sort in there. Now we also need to scope the appropriate slot to make sure that's the one that has the item placed into it. So under the slot object, go to alterable values. We want to compare one. We want to find out if the ID equals the ID under our, um, under our item group of ID. So go to the alterable value and grab slot ID. Now, like I said, I know this is a little complicated. There's a lot going on here, I apologize. Um, I'm going to include the MFA in the description so you can look at it in depth. But what's happening here is we're running a for each loop and we are scoping each slot. And then we're going to, all we're gonna do is under the group inventory item, we're gonna set the position and just go relative to and then slot. And the reason that is going to work is because we scoped each one here. Let's check it out. All right, so they have all been placed according to their IDs. So it does work. Before we proceed, we're gonna to need to add another variable. This is going to be selected object. And this is gonna be where we store the actual ID value, uh, not one we spread, but the like inbuilt ID value of the object we have currently selected. So now we want to actually let us be able to grab the item. So we're gonna type grab. Okay, this is gonna be a little complicated. We're gonna do this on enter. So the keyboard upon pressing the key, enter. Um, we wanna find out if a flag is off. So let's use a flag in Verbox. We'll grab flag zero, find out if it's off. So now we gotta scope the proper box. So we wanna go to the slot, find out if the alterable value is equal to, uh, if the ID value is equal to the value under Verbox of current ID. That means it's the one that is the currently highlighted one. We also want to find out if under our group of objects here for our items, if the alterable value of slot ID equals the value of current ID under our var box. So meaning is it the, is there essentially, essentially what we're doing here is if there is an object there uh, in this slot, we are scoping it as well. Okay. So go to values and grab current ID. Okay, so if this has all been done, now we're gonna do some stuff over here. Oh wait, one more thing, I forgot. Uh, we need to add another another variable to varbox. Do that now, call it buffer. Because we are using flags, and flags flip on and off so quick sometimes, you need a buffer to make sure it works properly, otherwise it'll it just won't. Just trust me on this, you want a buffer. So insert the final thing here, and that is going to be, we're gonna find out if this buffer value equals zero. So compare does buffer value under var box equals zero. Whew, all right, that was a doozy. So if all that stuff happens, now we're gonna just get some values and plug them in. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Under var box, alterable value, set the selected ID under the slot, grab the value of ID. So that is gonna be the currently selected slots uh, ID value. Okay, we also need to set the alterable value of selected object, and we are going to grab the currently scoped fixed value for our uh, group of event, our group of objects here, the item object. So that's at the bottom, it's retrieve fixed value. And what a fixed value is, every object that you make in the game has its own unique value, that's what a fixed value is. It's one way you can 
point to specific objects without having to use you know your built-in spread IDs this is another way to do that so just keep in mind that you can use fixed values so grab the fixed value we are going to turn on the flag that is currently off for this so flag set on flag 0 and uh, we're going to turn on that buffer so alterable value set buffer to 30 now you can do your own uh, buffer value I'll do 20 actually 30 is a little high okay so the reason we set up a selected ID value is because we want to have the selected uh, box have a red outline so we'll do that back up here for selected box just insert something a new event and we'll find out if the slot value um, of ID equals the value under var box of selected ID so if that happens we know that uh, that is the, the box that is currently selected and we want to change the animation then on that to the red box one which was I believe walking no it was running sorry let me edit that um okay let me see here this is the stopped animation yeah we need to add one more thing here insert on line 10 we're gonna find out if the alterable value of ID is different than the value under the var box of the current selected so selected ID meaning this one is so it's not the currently overlapped and it's not the currently selected then we're gonna turn that animation to stopped let's see if this works okay we can put a red outline around uh, one of our objects that's exactly what we want okay this is gonna be how we move the object and again this is gonna be really complicated sorry so keyboard upon pressing a key enter we want to find out if the flag is on of flag zero is flag zero on under our var box okay um, what else do we want to do buffer has to be zero and that's just to prevent these flags from instantly flipping on and off because that that's what happens without buffers okay we need to scope our uh, objects here so let's find out if um, this now we're scoping where we want to move the object to so we want to find out if the alterable value uh, of our ID equals under var box the value of current ID meaning that's where we have currently put our cursor and then we need to scope our proper item so we're gonna find out if the um, alterable value no sorry the fixed value of this item is equal to under var box the value of selected object which is where we plugged in that information okay that was kind of complicated now all we got to do is set the position here or sorry we do need to set the position but we knew that need to do that with a variable change we're going to uh, set the alterable value of slot ID to the value of ID off of our slot here because if these have been scoped this is going to be what we're looking for okay we got to do some more stuff here to the var box we want to set that buffer on so the flag doesn't flip on and off real quick uh, we want to turn off the flag because it's currently on since we're switching states here let's go to flag set off um, and we're going to need to clean out the variables that we had popped in here for what we were looking to do so we're going to set the alterable value of current ID to zero we're gonna set the alterable value of selected ID to zero and we're gonna set the alterable value of selected object to zero so that cleaned everything out so this should let us move an object around oh I forgot to do one very important thing we need to count down this buffer um, so find out if the uh, buffer is greater than zero 
So is buffer greater than zero? If that is the case, we need to always bring down the buffer value. So subtract one from it. Let's try to move this now. I broke something. Let me figure out what I did wrong. I, f I messed up. Uh, instead of subtracting one from buffer, I subtracted one from current ID. Don't do that. It'll break everything. Subtract one from buffer. I should have realized that when I saw the, uh, the selected box just fly, fly around. All right, let's try it now. Okay. Um, we can move things around. Actually, you know, there's something I don't like I did here. Uh, I made a mistake. Under line 19, where we are select setting selected ID to zero, delete that. We don't need to do that. Or sorry, current ID. Uh, we don't want to set current ID to zero. That's going to, after we press enter, it'll select the first box, which is actually a little annoying. Okay, well, these are all the exact same objects, so I'm going to get rid of them. I'm going to plug in some art for these. I'm going to essentially create clones of these and uh, plug in art. So I'll get right back to you. Okay, so I've imported art for all of these, and they are all different items. They're item one, two, three, four, and five. Now we're going to give these some descriptions. Okay, so this first one here, we're going to say, I don't know, whatever. I'm just going to say stuff. A ring of power. The Dark Lord forged in his anvil of doom. Okay, that seems good. The King's Crown, which you rested. Is that, is that a word? Which you yanked off his ugly head. We got a key here. A key which will unlock any door this key can unlock. That's very specific. An axe. A very special axe you use to murder your <laughs> murder your uh, your cheating spouse. I don't recommend you do that. That is not an advocation of violence towards women. A sapphire found in the deepest ocean. Isn't that special? Okay, let's insert a new object. This is going to be a string object, so grab a string. Where's that? There it is. Plop that on down there. So, we are going to, uh, whenever the object is selected, we are going to grab that value of that string and put it in here. So we have a description. Get description. So we need to scope the object. We need to find out if the alterable value of slot ID equals the value of current ID in our var box. And that just scopes the one that we got here. When that is the case, we are going to set, rather, sorry, change alterable string. And uh, we're gonna grab the string from our group of objects here, our inventory item objects. Go to values, get the alterable string, and it was called description. Let's see if that works. It does work. Now there's one problem. When we get off of uh, any items that we, we uh, when we're not selecting an item, we still, we are left with the last string we have. We need to clear that. So just copy and paste this, edit it. And uh, change equal to different. So we're essentially finding out if it's, if it's not the currently selected, then we're gonna change the string to null. That's just two quotations. And as you see, everything's gone. It didn't work at all. That's just because of the order of events. So grab this line 23, drag it on top of line 22. So what's gonna happen here is it's gonna nullify it first. So nullifies the string, and then uh, we can actually just do this. Replace this with an always event. Always nullify the string and then change the string back to the description we were looking for. Okay, that works great, it's fantastic. We can move our stuff around, we can look at all the various descriptions. There's a couple problems with it though, we can grab objects and place them on top of other objects, that's not what we wanna do. Um, and we also need to add a way to add more items and then sort these. 
So let's do this now. So this is how we're going to create items. Now this is this this would be like um, this is just reflective of like example like when you would pick up a sword or your eye whatever the item is. This is the kind of code you would have um, to put it into the inventory and sort that inventory. It's actually really simple. Let's do it now. We'll do it on a keyboard press. I'll say upon pressing one, I am just going to create an object, and um, it's going to be the ring. We're going to place it off of the screen because otherwise it might you might see it momentarily before it sorts. We don't want to do that, so we want to make sure the player doesn't see it. So throw it off the screen. <clears throat> okay, it is the currently scoped item, so we can go to the ultra value and set the slot ID, and we're going to set it to the uh, count for the item type. So number of objects under group inventory item. Let's see what happens. So it adds them on to the end. But if we keep adding, what will happen? Well, as you see, our, uh, our object count is actually going up, but they are not being placed where we want them. They're being placed, I don't know, I guess maybe they're off screen. I'm not entirely sure where it's at. But that is not what we want. We don't want to let you get items if your inventory is full. So we need to add a stipulation here. Find out if the uh, count for these objects, go to picker count, compare to number of groups in of this item. And we want to find out if it is lower than the number of slots we have, meaning there is still space for it. So go to count number of objects. So we're finding out if the number of our items is lower than the number of our slots. If that's the case, then we can add one to it. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to go ahead and essentially recreate this line, but for every other item. Okay, so I have made it so that upon pressing one, two, three, four, and five, we can create a different item, and it will, um, you know, do the whole ID thing that we talked about. Make doubly sure, though. Let's click on this. That the create event is first before the sorting event. Otherwise, it'll just jack up the items that are already sorted. Because what happens in Fusion is, is if you create a new object, it is the currently scoped object for the rest of this code here. So anything we do to this to uh, an object of this type or or an object in this group of objects it's going to be scoped for that particular object that was just created so keep that in mind because if we were to do this it would break everything all right let's test it as you see it's kind of popping on the screen um, that's because of the that's because of where I placed it when I created it. I kind of messed that up. Like I said, I'm gonna make sure that it is off the screen. Let me do that. Okay, so now we might uh, want to sort these items, which is the absolute easiest thing in the world. Um, so let's do it this way. Let's call this sort, and we will say we're gonna find out if a flag. We're gonna use a flag to this. So go to var box under flags is flag on, that'll be flag two. So anytime flag two is turned on, we are going to sort things. And the way you sort is you just go to our group inventory item, go to alterable values, and spread the value of slot ID, and spread one. Make sure you don't do zero, it's gotta be one. That's all you gotta do to sort. It'll just respread those IDs, and since the IDs are so are attached to what uh, to the placement of where these objects go, it just resorts them just like that. Uh, also, then right after we do that, we want to turn that flag off. So set off flag one, not twelve. One. Let's make sure my order is right. It is. And now, uh, anytime we need to sort things, we just need to set flag two on. So, for example, keyboard. Upon pressing S, we are going to turn on flag two, and it will sort them. So let's check it out. Let's like move. Let's make some stuff and uh, move it all out of position. Let's press S. Boom. Sorted. Um, the last thing we wanted to do in this tutorial was to make sure that these objects can't overlap. Um, 
I would like to add some swapping functionality, but I don't have time for that today. So we're just going to sort them whenever they overlap. So we'll leave this in the sort section. We will find out if the group inventory item is overlapping another object, and that is the same thing, group inventory item. If that is the case, then we're just gonna sort stuff. So go to var box, go to flags, set on flag two. Let's test it and see what happens. Perfect. Now, so you don't run into problems with this, you gotta make sure that your art is all the proper size so that um, it doesn't overlap when it's next to each other on this grid. So you wanna make sure it's the same size as your grid items, and also make sure that all of your hotspots are centered. Otherwise, when they place on, they might overlap the other one and then trigger the resorting, which will just jack everything up. Actually, none of the items will move uh, if that's happening. So you don't want that to happen, so make sure your items are sized properly. Uh, is there anything else we're supposed to do? I think that might be everything for now. Oh yes. I want to do one last thing, and that is to destroy the currently selected object if we choose. So we need to scope the object. So find out if the alterable value of slot ID equals, um, and this is under our group of objects items, If uh, find out if slot ID equals the value of current selected, no, not current selected, current ID. Okay, so this is the one that has the white outline over it. And also if we press delete, or D rather, we'll just use D. And if that happens, then go to group inventory item and destroy. So this should allow us to destroy items that we have our cursor over, and it does. So we can add all these items. We can destroy whatever we want, which would, would be the same thing you probably want to do after you use an item, depending on how your game works. So um, that covers the basics of this inventory system. Um, we're going to add more to it. Like I said, we're going to try to add swapping and just some other stuff, uh, like placing these items into like equipment slots and stuff like that, and then transferring the data from these items into your code that would control like I don't know strength or whatever however your game would work we're just gonna try to you know show you the basics of how that will be done but for now this is finished so I want to thank you guys for sticking with me on this pretty challenging tutorial um, I know it was hard so I hopefully you understood what was going on and you learned something so um, as always guys I want to thank you for watching this video if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them down below uh, and I will try to get back to you as always and if you need some assistance feel free to hop into my discord and ask some people around there I'm there frequently and if I'm not there's lots of people that can help you out all right guys thanks for watching uh, and I will see you in the next video peace